So here we are loaded for expedition. Right? I should be riding this instead, but. Okay, bike is aired up and ready to go. This is the maiden voyage of actual testing the trailer. I've gone around the yard a few times, but never off property. Okay, if you noticed in the first shot, uh, the trailer was actually set up with the original wheels again. That was the first time I actually used the trailer to go somewhere. But in the, in the rest of this video, I'm testing the idea of putting bigger wheels on it, which ends up is a much better idea. Uh, the little wheels work pretty well on asphalt, but it's all gravel out here. And I go across some cattle guards and the little wheels actually were dropping into the cattle guards, so that becomes a problem. These 20 inch wheels are basically your um, BMX tires. Um, I got them as cart wheels from Northern Tools. They're about $25 a piece on special and they are load rated for something like 250 pounds I think. So what this is, this is a regular hand cart like you would use for moving boxes around. I've had one for years. This is probably the second or third one I've owned. And I, I knew I was going to need a trailer for the bicycle after I sold the truck. Now the, the funny thing is this trailer, this video starts off back in May, I think. So I, I put some time into this, played around with some different ideas, and then decided not to do it for a while. And uh, I took a few trips to the post office with just a backpack on the bicycle. And that worked okay the first time. And then the second time was uh, the, the care package where somebody sent me a couple of cases of canned food and it just about killed me. So then I'm like, oh, I got to go find the trailer again. And uh, what had happened was I liked the little wheels for moving stuff around out here. So I took the big wheels off the trailer, put the little wheels back on, and then decided, well, I needed to go check my mail. So I just tested it with the little wheels. At this point, I got it set up where I think I'm going to use it. Uh, the new brackets are in place. It actually pulls pretty well. It looks a little bit funny. But here I'm testing standing it up like a hand cart, and that's actually really close. So I got that part pretty good. Uh, one of the issues, though, is that tote drags on the wheels. So I'm probably going to go back and revisit this again. I've already tested going to the post office twice with the original wheels and they just aren't big enough but they were close so I'm gonna put these 20 inch wheels back on but I'm gonna to have to redo things a little bit okay this next part one of the things that I was looking at is there isn't a hitch on a bicycle but if I could hitch it right to the back of the seat that would sure make things a lot simpler so I tried it this way and it did actually work but it wasn't ideal it was you know pretty bad actually uh, but I didn't want to put a lot of time into making a proper hitch if I didn't have to so I thought well let me just try this and see what I can learn from it the biggest thing is the center of gravity was just so messed up when it was way up like this because the load is up too high it didn't pivot right it pulled funny you always felt it bumping you and you know so it just wasn't very good also because the load is right over the axle it tended to lean back and it would actually try to lift you up a little bit. Uh, for testing, this tote was full of uh, parts of the welder, grinders, um, clamps, metalworking clamps, and so on. So it's a pretty good load, which is a, a good test, I think. Um, anyway, so I just wanted to try it out. One of the, the issues is I wanted to make sure you could turn. And what was it like to turn? I'd never really tried pulling a trailer behind a bicycle before. So I'm just kind of cruising around in my in my yard here, and that, that part wasn't too bad. But when you go to stop, then you feel the trailer pushing you a little bit. So it wasn't ideal. I had a had a pretty good tail waggle there, and <laughs> the load keeps trying to tip the bicycle over. Um, one thing that I was thinking of when I tried this, though, I have seen a rig where you could tow your children in. Um, child carriers 
child seats, whatever, on the back of a bicycle. And they had done something like this, but they had a long gooseneck trailer uh, hitch. So it would attach to the back of the seat, but it had more of a, a curved piece of metal than I didn't have anything readily available that would work for that. What I did have, though, is a whole bunch of this um, conduit. This is left over from the truck tarp tent projects. So I thought, well, let's try it out. It's, it's fairly strong. One of the things that I really was working through on this project is making something for behind a bicycle doesn't have to be as well made as what I'm used to trying to do. Right. I was an aircraft mechanic. I've worked on trucks and, you know, I grew up on a farm and I'm used to things being really heavy duty. And I had to really stop and remind myself a few times, like in this shot, I'm just using a hose clamp or two hose clamps to mount this. Right. And that's probably good enough, you know. And if you can't find your hammer, you just hit it with a rock, you know. So I just had a scrap of wood here with a couple holes drilled in it. And I just ran a screw to hold it in place. And that was my first real attempt at making the hitch. Now, if you're into this kind of thing, don't jump to conclusions too soon. Because this changes constantly throughout this video. So I had an idea. I would try it out. And I'm like, well, let's just see is the geometry right before I waste a bunch of time welding up a proper bracket is this even going to work or what 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 unforeseen problem am I going to run into right so this one it lasted about a day I walked you know I drove it around the yard a couple times I knew that wasn't the end product but I needed something to test with so it was kind of a quick and easy thing to try out and I used parts that I already had I didn't you know, go breaking into brand new um, pipes or something. These parts, again, were left over from one of the truck tarp tent projects. So I was just kind of like, well, let's put it together and see what we can learn going forward. Um, I don't have an anvil, but I do have the front bumper on the bus, and I've used that particular spot several times. It's just the funniest thing. I'll just go over there and start hammering on it, and uh, it works really good. You use what you got, right? Yeah, there's a lot of things that, you know, if I had a proper machine shop or something like that, I would probably do things differently. But in the meantime, this works out pretty good. I always laugh when I see this little hammer. It's, I mean, it's a two-pound sledgehammer, but it's I think it's a masonry hammer. It's made for, like, breaking rocks. The day I bought this, I needed a proper hammer. Now, as a mechanic, I'm used to using a ball-peen hammer using a claw hammer for this kind of thing is just wrong. But I have two claw hammers and I've got this little sledgehammer. So notice the proper use of a jack stand. I don't even own a truck anymore, but I've got four jack stands. So whenever I need something, I grab one of the jack stands and that works really good. So checking out to see if it would pivot or not. This is one of the issues I was going to have to work through is when you got a hitch, it has to be able to pivot. And on a bicycle, you also have to deal with leaning and also pitching because you're going up and down over hills and bumps and stuff like that. And so it's going to bind up if you don't have enough movement, which could be really uncomfortable if you're thinking you're going to lean into a corner and then the trailer doesn't lean or you lean into a corner and the trailer tips over. So this was you know a bunch of things all at the same time you got to figure it all out and hopefully you can learn enough lessons before it you know crashes on you but again this is a, a load full of uh, tools so I had a pretty good load just putting around to see if it was going to tip over or what it was going to do there's parts of my driveway that have a pretty significant slope to them I think I'll make the trailer a little bit wider I wonder if just leaving the harbor or the regular 10 inch wheels on there would have been a big deal. I do want to set the wheels just a little bit wider. That'll give me room to run the cooler. Right now I think the cooler would, would hit. The tote does slide into the tires. So I got to have something to like a little side rail would be plenty. It rides really nice. It really does. Whoa. 
This is one of those things you're not even sure if it should exist in nature or not. <laughs> hey, metal cutting skill saw. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> These are the school bus seats. Since I have a school bus, it came with all the seats. And uh, when I moved into it, I took all the seats out, but I saved the metal from them and a lot of these kinds of projects. I recycle that metal into it. It's really, it's more work than it's worth, but I've got it. So rather than going into town and buying new steel, which I don't have the money for, and I don't have a truck. So the, the challenge will be sometimes is you look at the pile of parts you have and then you try to envision one part that would fit. And quite often these curved pieces work out in, in a way that you can use them. One of the problems though is the metal is very rusty and so you're always cleaning up things like these are spot welds and then I'm using a cutoff tool to change the shape of a bracket I had made. These pieces got welded off camera. Uh, I was just trying to get this one done so I took this uh, long straight piece with a curved on the back and then just cut little pieces of metal and made tabs that I then bolted onto the back of the frame. That actually worked out pretty good. So I'm kind of working this in sections right now. So I'm going to say this is working. Oh, I never did finish welding that. Oops. <laughs> the other side is completely welded and this one was just tacked. All right, we might take it apart one more time. I might paint it the next time I take it apart too. But yeah, there's like not a lot of load on there. So this is solid as can be, no no problem. This side, I did some notching to clear the chain and the sprockets and everything. The other side was just straight up. Um, I think we're pretty close to balanced, actually now. It was hanging further to the left, but I think it's pretty close now. And I made a center point on here, so it's roughly in the center. Pretty close. And then from here back, I haven't changed since yesterday. Okay, so what I've got, this is a flat uh, fender washer, piece of square tubing. I'm going to weld it onto that. Then I'll be able to take a bolt, quarter by 20, go down through it. Probably a nylock, like this one. So I can leave a little bit of slack in it. And then the washer will rub up against another washer, and that'll give me a pivot. So that'll give me the the uh, the roll axis. All right. So... That'll keep it holding still. The way I'm thinking it here, that'll hold it down. So I'm going to do the opposite side. Just kind of use the clamp to hold it. That's my grounding clamp. Okay. I don't even know why I wear these gloves. There's no fingers left on them. Probably best not to use a wooden surface when you're welding, right? So yeah, I'm running the generator for welding, but then I can grind off of the inverter. I just don't have quite enough power. It's not so much about how good of a welder you are as long as you're good with the grinder. And when you're throwing sparks, always throw them right at the camera. That makes things look really cool. A little bit of flap brush and it's shiny as can be and hot. Okay, the idea here is that hole in the washer slips over the bolt that was on there. Now the funny thing is I didn't show this, but I had planned on just reaching in with a nut and putting it over that stud that's sticking out. Well, you can't reach that far. So I ended up having to take the hole back off and putting it together. I've changed this a couple times since then. so But this gives me the, the one direction of pivot that I need. You really need three axes of pivot 
pitch roll and yaw for this to not bind up on you. This was made with a couple pieces of flat stock and a piece of square tubing that was cut and split and hammered into submission. I think at this point I thought I had put it together backwards already. So the important thing, the first part, setting that pivot up so that I can have the bike go down and not take the trailer with it. So that works good. And then I turn. Back here's binding a little bit, but not too bad. This is probably going to be the weakest point. I might come back and visit that. All right, let's go out and take it for a spin and see how it does. Oh, it's wonderful. I really should look and see if I could find some like Benny Hill music or something here, but or circuit mu circus music or. Anyway, um, basically it did what it needed to do. I've been using this a couple of times to go get groceries. I am going to put these big wheels back on. That really seemed to make a difference. Okay, uh, yeah, not bad. All right, a few minutes before 8 o'clock, uh, pulled a giant thorn out of the back tire of the bicycle. So you don't want to see a thorn, but it sure is a lot nicer when you actually find what's causing your flat. I'm going to take the backpack and as much water as I can carry. So here we are loaded for expedition. Right? I should be riding this instead. but Okay, bike is aired up and ready to go. This is the maiden voyage of actual testing the trailer. I've gone around the yard a few times but never off property. So a bag of trash bungee down, another bag of actually empty concrete bags that I was going to burn, but I'm scared to burn out here. I'd, be, I'd feel really bad if I was the guy that burned the whole desert down. So two blue straps holding the box down, that seems like it'll be fine. We'll just keep an eye on it. I've got a bunch of cargo straps if I need them, but we should be good to go. So yeah, you got to go almost two, about two thirds of the way before I get to where I can dump the trash. Yeah. The trailer rattles a lot. Uh, it's basically between the wheels and the axles. There's a lot of slop there, so they, they bounce around. And front wheel, back wheel, pedal crank, bearings are all worn out. But uh, next, this next week, I think, new, I got an assortment of like a hundred of every size of bearings. Because I don't want to, I don't want to take the bike apart and then find out I've got the wrong thing. So I've got a grease gun coming, I've got grease, I've got the bearings coming, and I think I've got all the wrenches I need now. So 12.55 on the 6th of July. It's uh, about 95 degrees inside. I'll go with that. So this morning, actually last night, I saw the back tire was flat. Great big thorn in it when I took it apart. So it's almost better when you find the thorn than you know why it's flat. Patched it, seems like it's holding good still, so that's good. Aired up the front a little bit more, but really they're holding pretty good. So bike is still good. Making noises everywhere, all the bearings are wore out. So I think the next shipment has uh, new bearings coming in. So we're good there. This worked very well. I'm very happy with this. I'm very tired, but very happy. You know, sometimes, ouch, I'd make things complicated and you really don't have to. There's a couple little mods on this, but basically this is an off the shelf, ready to go hand cart from like a Home Depot or Northern Tools or something like that. I don't remember where I got this one from anymore. Uh, maybe visible on this side, there's a couple brackets I added. I can run a 20 inch tire on here. These are 10 inch tires. So I've got some 20 inch tires that I'm gonna make some kind of a cart out of. I think they would ride a little better. These things um, make a lot of noise because there's it's just a shaft for the axle 
and then the wheel sits on it and it's held on with a cotter pin. There's no tension there, so they bounce around and rattle pretty bad. So a lot of the noise is just the wheels making noise. But otherwise, this is working really well. One thing I noticed today though, I think more of the load is in this box. Yeah, that happens sometimes. <laughs> I was trying not to do that, but anyway, um, too much of the load is on the bicycle. So sometimes it tips over. I think, yeah, that's, that's part of it. It is hot. It's, it's a dry heat and also we're at about 4,000 feet here. Now I've been doing this, I mean, I'm living here for a few years now, so I'm pretty much used to it, but it does add up, I think, a little bit, so. But I think the biggest thing is just you're out in the sun basically for three hours, an hour and a half going there, you get a couple minutes to cool down at the post office, and then an hour and a half coming back. It's just hot. <sighs> 11.59 on the 9th, 97 in here, forecast is for 102 in town. <sighs> that worked out well. That is probably max load, honestly. 25 pounds of rice, two canisters of oatmeal, or no, two canisters of lemonade, which are pretty heavy, a container of coffee, and then I'm not sure what all else. So I'm gonna bring that in and then sit down for maybe the rest of the week. Yeah, frick.